Welcome back to the channel. And today we have four Kaiser Rapid Reviews. We're gonna get started first up with the Kaiser Sparrow. Now this is the one that first came out with the Micarta and the 154 CM blade. And I like this one a good bit. It's got thicker scales, it's pretty comfortable, but I always wanted it to be a little bit longer. So they released a titanium version that's a little bit longer. And this particular one has S35V in steel. You got a sheep's foot blade, nice raw stone wash finish, good jimping, and also you have a good sharpening tool that should give you some sharpening life back here. I think this would be a good work knife. You got a mid height flat grind that still comes down decently thin to around 18 thousandths behind the edge. Nice tip there that you're gonna better get down on the things. Excellent utility cutter. If you need to trace out something, you can do that. And you have very slight belly all the way to that tip. So it's not gonna be crazy swoopy going up. You're gonna be making in-hand cuts pretty darn easy. Now, when it came to the testing of this knife, this performed outstanding. Very, very sticky sharp out of box. It had excellent toothiness to it cardboard no problem whatsoever and their s35vn i found it performs pretty darn well this is a perfect size edc for me it's 7.58 inches long it's got a 3.2 inch blade i do like this size because it fills out my hand nicely whenever i started doing the wood shaving to try to test the ergos i felt they were pretty darn good you have like somewhat of a contoured scale because you have uh two big chamfers on both sides kind of peak up here in the middle and my fingers fit perfectly in the large trowel they have in the front. But if you had large hands, I'm not sure you might be sitting on the little hump, but for me, it was good. Also, these have a very dark, heavy blast on them. And I'm not usually used to seeing that with uh, Kaisers. Usually it's like a bead blasted finish, but this is like a dark aluminum oxide finish and it offers a good bit of traction. Now, if you don't like a chalky feeling knife, then this one might bother you. But for me, I like that extra grip that it gave me and nothing was poking or prodding me during my testing. When it comes to the action, it's a dual deploying knife. You have a blade hole and a flipper tab. The best means of deployment, in my opinion, are the blade hole. It's an excellent reverse flicker. You can thumb flick it, you can slow roll it. And they do have the detent dial to where even though that flipper is canted down almost underneath that pivot, you still get a pretty nice flip. And if you wanted to load up on it, you could do that as well. It is riding on ceramic bearings with a ceramic detent ball. And it is very, very smooth. Nice controlled drop on it. I like that. Out of the knives that I'm reviewing today, this is the one that I carried the most. I just connect with it and like I said, I enjoyed the 154CM and my Carta one so much that this one was a joy to carry. Now to the handle area, you got tie scales, T8 pivot, T8 body screws. Only T6 screws you have are on the pocket clip. You have a mill titanium pocket clip that functions nicely. And it's not deep carry. You have about that much sticking out of the pocket. Didn't really bother me any. It is reversible. And as you can see, they have a hidden filler tab right there. Really nicely done. Kaiser's been doing some really, really good work. The lockup on mine is sitting at around, I'd say 40, maybe 50% or so. And no play, any direction whatsoever. Very tight lockup here. Access is great because it comes down a little bit further than the show side scale and you have that little chamfer right there Making it very easy to get to a good bit of internal milling bringing the weight down to four ounces Also pretty balanced in hand and here's a quick size comparison with the Ontario rat one and two Only nitpick I have with the knife I would have loved to see this clip backed up a little bit But I know they didn't want to get too close to that back screw right there so i get it but overall love the knife definitely definitely recommend it especially at the 159 dollars price point next up we have the kaiser mercury and this is a pretty impressive knife for kaiser with them kind of flexing their machining capabilities you have a you know a nice medium size edc knife at 7.35 inches long 3.25 inch sheep's foot blade kind of reminds me of like a spanish tip razor nice satin finish it's a nice looking gents knife. It's very, very minimalistic, very slender. You have CPM S35VN and you have a full height almost very, very close to the top hollow grind. And the hollow grind, it, it was a good choice in my opinion since you have such a narrow blade here. 
you're still able to get it down decently thin comes down to around 18 thousandths behind the edge so you know that with a sharp edge should still slice pretty darn well excellent utility blade shape you can easily get that tip onto things do drag cuts do fine precise precision work they also have one of the best sharpening trolls i've seen out of kaiser i love the way they went straight up from that plunge right there so you're going to have tons of sharpening life before it starts to widen back here no jumping but i don't find it to be needed i mean this is not a heavy use knife you're not going to be using this thing super hard because it's not intended for that but all your day-to-day -day average edc task this thing's going to be able to handle them well it sliced cardboard really well it had a good edge out of box and whenever it came to doing the uh, wood shaving to test the ergos the ergos were good but being that you have such a narrow handle and it's not super thick I was really having to bear down on this handle so that the knife wouldn't spin in the hand but that takes me back to what I just said earlier this is not intended for hard use at all this is to take it out make a quick cut put it up break down a box you know cut some string open up a package uh, you know office style work it's going to do a really good job with it you know like i said if you had to come through something and that was also kind of the case whenever i was doing the sisal rope cutting you just don't have a whole lot of handle to pinch down whenever you're pushing hard into something and i was able to do the cutting of the rope and i, I think i cut like 60 uh pieces of half inch sisal rope and it did well it was just in not the easy i had to use this pointer finger grip so I could control that front part by the pivot to do that kind of stuff you know if you need to do a few of those I think this would work great I just wouldn't want to do it a lot of it it's just it's just not that the right knife for the job the flipping action on the knife really good it's got a pretty high flipper there's some jimping there mine comes out nicely and it's not a, a free dropper, but you know, just give it a little bit of encouragement shakes and it goes back to its home. Um, I'm, I'm okay with that. It is riding on ceramic ball bearings with a ceramic detent ball, giving it a nice glassy smooth action. And these handle scales is kind of what I was talking about. Some beautiful micro milling and nice contouring. And they did a clamshell construction, almost looks like an integral. You can see that line right there probably where there's no backspacer they just milled it out and then joined them together and if you look at this side it's very clean you only have a pivot screw and the the body screw is on the opposite side coming through this way i think that's uh perfect for this type of knife perfectly centered blade you can see right there at that little mark where the two pieces come together and they also gave you a blind screwed mill titanium pocket clip. Another thing just to keep it nice and clean. That just means it's screwed in from the inside. This is an inset liner lock as you can see here. And the liner only comes to about right here. No problem. It locks up nicely. And this thing weighs hardly nothing. And they skeletonize the inside along with having the micro milling and already being narrow bringing the weight down to two ounces. So you could have this in a shirt pocket and you could easily carry this in gym shorts. You, you wouldn't hardly feel it. The lockup on mine is sitting at around, I'd say 50% or so. I mean, I could flex this if I wanted to, but I don't have any movement up or down, left or right, nice and tight. Access to the lock bar is good because of this cutout right here. And they do have some texture up top. Mine has a slight, slight bit of stick, but it could be that I have a little bit of oil on the lock face. Here it is next to the Ontario Rat 1 and 2. One thing I just noticed, I took this knife apart. This is supposed to be on this side. That was my fault. But you have a Torx T8 for the pivot. My only nitpick with the knife is, is I wish they would have went with a T8 here, being that that's your only body screw and it's going into titanium. I would have liked to have a little bit bigger of a screw. But other than that, if this is something you're looking for, a nice, slender, lightweight, gents carry knife, then I think you'll be really, really happy with this. It's a very well-made knife, and these coming in at 139 bucks, that's pretty darn impressive. With the S35EN steel, mill pocket clip, contoured scales, clamshell construction, yeah, I think you'll be very, very happy. 
Next up, we have the Kaiser Dogfish. Another good size EDC knife at 7.38 inches long with a 3.16 inch drop point blade of 154 CM steel. It does have a black coating on it, flat black. It's not uh, stone washed or anything. You do have a nice crown spine up top and it just gives it that ex extra elegance. You do have awesome jimping right here. Somewhat of a harpoon right there. Harpoon spot really locks you into place. You have a good sharpening choil that also doubles as a forward finger choil. And uh, I was able to use it rather easily. I have to say, I really, really like Kaiser's 154CM. It gets very, very sharp. I like to keep it at like a, say, a 7, 800 grit ed edge. Keep it nice and toothy. And usually the ones I get from Kaiser have a nice aggressive toothy edge to them. Not to mention, whenever I get done with my testing, I could easily strop them back. That's another huge plus with 154CM and it holds a really good edge also. This knife has a mid-height flat grind, comes down to around 16 thousandths behind the edge and with that nice sharp edge to it, it sliced very, very well. I was kind of worried when I first grabbed this knife in that forward finger trawl area, I was kind of worried that it was going to be uncomfortable because it kind of felt a little awkward at first. But as soon as I got used to it, my fingers fit nicely and it was rather comfortable. I had no real hot spots to speak of. Uh, everything kind of stayed out of the way of the palm, this uh, pocket clip, and the scales were pretty darn comfortable. No problems I noticed. Now, I don't know if it's coming across, but this coating is still intact, but it's starting to look pretty rough. Not something I really care about, but... And that's just par for the course whenever you have a coated blade. I think they use like a PVD coating on it. It holds up decent. The action on this knife, this is a button lock and it has so many means to deploy. You have your back flipper right there. Works excellent. It's very minimal. It has nice jimping on it. Then you have a front flipper that, that wraps around right there. That's pretty easy as well. You can also do the reach around. And then you have the blade hole. That's excellent for reverse flicking. And you could also throw it out there with that button. As soon as I release that button, mine's a free dropper. Yeah, they did a good job. I'm not usually, I don't usually like when they try to put so many different deployment methods on it. I would have definitely been fine with just this flipper and that blade hole. Uh, but you know, that's just an added bonus for people who like front flippers. But this thing is definitely, definitely a fidgeter's dream. It flips nicely and crisp and very, very smooth on that action. Riding on ceramic ball bearings. Test that button lock. Yeah, nice and tight. Let's take a look at the handle area. I love the look of these aluminum scales. Some nice milling there. And you got a nice chamfer going all the way around. So it made it pretty darn comfortable in hand. I like the way they did the construction. You have your pivot. And you have the filler tab right there. Now the filler tab is black. I'm not sure why they didn't just go with the same color here to blend it in. I guess to go with the uh, black pivot and the black button there and the blade. So it doesn't look bad. It would have just blended in nicer if they would, it would have been gray, but it's fine there. You got a small, I'm guessing that's a titanium backspacer there. You have a reversible tip up pocket clip, titanium pocket clip there. And they're using that screw to hold this body. This That is also the body screw and holds that filler tab. Now you do have inset stainless steel liners in there, but they have been heavy, heavily skeletonized to bring down the weight as much as possible. Bringing the weight to 3.4 ounces. Here it is next to the Ontario Rat 1 and 2. Nitpicks and complaints. I wish they would have given us a black wash blade. I'm not a fan of their, their flat black finish. It just starts to look pretty wonky once you have done a good bit of cutting with them. And I would have liked a flat spot underneath that pocket clip. However, if they would have done that and they would if they would have did it on this side, it would have looked kind of funny. I don't know how they could have combated that, but you know, it's not the worst because the, the retention is not super, super tight. But after a while, it should probably become a pocket shredder. Also, there's no recess for the button lock. 
So if you're holding the knife in that forward finger troll and you wrap around like this, doing a hammer grip, uh, you definitely need to be careful with this finger being on top of it. Um, I'm able to kind of situate my finger below it whenever I was holding it. So it's got to be careful, like I said, because there is no recess. But at $99, do I think it's worth it? Yeah, I do. If none of the things I talked about are deal breakers for you, then yeah, I definitely, definitely can recommend it. Last up, we have the Kaiser Doberman. And this is the largest of the bunch at 8.6 inches long with a 3.6 inch drop point blade of 154cm steel. They also have a more premium version with S35VN and titanium scales. I found that I like this one a little bit more than the more premium one because this one's a good bit lighter in the pocket and it's a little bit better balanced because of not having as much weight having the titanium scales. We have a pretty interesting looking blade on this one. You have a little hump right here and the jimping goes all the way to the front so if you choke back right here you have a good spot to let rest your thumb and if you choke up right here this little scoop is very very comfortable you got a nice precise point right there for piercing good sharpening charles should give you some sharpening life for it starts to widen back there satin finish on it full flat grind this one comes down to 15 thousands behind the edge or in that ballpark and man oh man did this thing slice very very well not to mention you have that extra blade length extra cutting edge this thing was a blast to use and once again i love their 154 cm this one held up to the end and still feels nice and sharp kaiser also did a good job of keeping those thumb studs out of the cutting path one thing that i enjoyed with this knife is you can see a lot of this edge is sitting below this handle so if i'm in a pinch grip I can get all the way to back here down onto the cutting board before my knuckles want to come in contact with the cutting board. So it was it was such a versatile blade. It really did a good job with everything. If I wanted to, I can get that tip down on the things, but I do kind of have to come up high on it. I use that belly a lot of the times to do drag cuts. The ergonomics on this knife were outstanding because you have smooth G10 and they did just a slight contour but the softening they did on these edges of this knife just feels so good in hand. They fill out the hand nicely when you're choked back, when you're choked up, this little scoop paired with that comfortable handle, man is it nice. I found that the choke up spot was where I was wanting to be pretty much during all the testing besides flat cutting surface it just feels the most natural to me i like to be close up to that edge so i can control what i'm doing and the beautiful contouring they have on that pocket clip made it really nice in hand i did not it did not feel like it was jabbing me or anything love it this knife also shines in the deplo deployment area you have a nice flipper tab and thumb studs minimal flipper tab but it works excellent. You got some nice jimping there. And look how high it is above that pivot. So once you pull back on this thing, it just thwacks open. It's riding on ceramic bearings, ceramic detent ball. That thumb stud action works great as well. Very easy to overcome that detent. <laughs> Yet it's dialed beautiful. That's why they could get away with such a minimal flipper tab. It just works so well. And those thumb studs are nice and comfortable. I can easily reverse flick it, thumb flick it. They like said you have the smooth G10 scales, T8 pivot, T8 body screw. You have a titanium backspacer that's coated black. A little bit of jimping there. It is raised a little bit from the scales. And you have a lanyard spot at the very back of the knife. And when I first got this knife, I said it was only tip up right hand carry only. But the way they did this is pretty genius. The filler tab is a screw. It goes straight in and into the pocket clip. They also put a little bit of texture there. It's not really, doesn't really give you much grip. I was able to get it in and out of the pocket fairly nicely. Now my, probably my biggest gripe on this knife is this pocket clip because they put that nub there and this thing barely flexes at all it's definitely going to become a pocket shredder over time because that nub when it's when you're pulling back grabs a hold to the pants and just <laughs> i don't know it's just not i, I would have much preferred 
say the way they do it, like on this uh, dogfish, slanted back like that. That works way better in my opinion. And maybe that's because of the way they did it. I, I don't know. That's about how much you have sticking out of the pocket. Not bad. They were able to keep the weight down this knife because this is just one solid chunk of G10 on the show side scale. And then you have a partial stainless steel liner lock on the uh, lock side and the titanium backspacer. I love how they have the grooved out center of it. Bringing the weight to 4.4 ounces, not bad. It is still a little bit butt heavy. The balance point is about right there. Way better than the all tie version, but you know, still kind of butt heavy. Lock up on mine is sitting at around, I'd say 50 or 60% or so. No movement up or down, left to right. Pretty nice and tight here. Uh, access to lock bar is pretty good. This comes down just a little bit lower than the lock side. I have no issues getting my finger in there. Here's a size comparison with Ontario Wrap 1 and 2. Nitpicks and complaints. I really only have two. Like I said, I either relieve the tension a little bit on this pocket clip, and I'm not the biggest fan of the nub design there. It just goes pretty rough going in and out of the pocket. Sometimes I even have to try to lift it up a little bit to get it past the pocket, but not terrible, just not the best. And also, uh, if you do take it apart, you may want to put Loctite on the pivot. I did have the pivot work its way out a few times on me until I put some Loctite on it. But that's, that's pretty common practice. But overall, knife has outstanding action. It's very uh, fidgety. It's got a nice, comfortable handle and it's got a nice slicey blade here. Overall, I think it's an outstanding knife, especially uh, these coming at $82, and you get the all tie with the S35VN black wash blade for $169. So that does it for today's video. If any of these knives interest you, I will have links down in the description. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, leave those down below. I hope everybody's having an absolute, absolute amazing day. Let me know what you think about this format, and I'll see you all in the next one. Peace!